My invisible friends, hello and welcome back to our series on electrical engineering. Tonight we want to extract maximum power out of a circuit represented by its Thevenin equivalent, VTH, RTH and XTH. To do that we connect an external impedance, ZX. That is the goal for tonight, maximum power extraction out of a circuit. What should be the value of the external impedance, ZX? so that it takes maximum power out of that circuit. But the natural question is, wait a second, this is AC steady state, these are phasers and impedances. There are four types of power here, complex power, ZX with a hat, active power PX, reactive power QX, and the parent power SX without a hat. Which one do we want to maximize? The active power P. PX, that is what we want to be maximum. But wait a second, what we're connecting to the circuit is an impedance ZX that represented in series can be written as the sum in series of a resistance RX and a reactance XXJ. And you and I know that only the real part RX is the one that is absorbing active power PX. If the reactive power is absorbing, of course, only reactive power. We do not care for that tonight. So let's write the active power in ZX, that is the power in RX, RI squared. So we need uh, that current in the circuit. That current is given by Ohm's law, the voltage VTH, a complex number, divided by the total impedance in the circuit, real part plus J times the imaginary part of that impedance, the total impedance. But the reality is that we don't care for that current either. We care for its RMS value, or rather, for the square of the RMS value. So let's write the RMS value squared directly, that is VTH squared, the RMS value of the VTH squared, mm, divided um, by the square of the absolute value of the impedance in the circuit, real part squared plus imaginary part squared, that is a square of the impedance in that circuit. Multiply that by Rx and we get the power Px that we want to maximize. Now for any value of the external resistor Rx, if we minimize the denominator of this expression we get maximum power. One easy way to do that is neutralize the second term in the denominator. How? Just makes Xx, the external reactance, equal to the negative of the Thevenin reactance X Thevenin make XX equal to the negative of XTH and we will be maximizing PX for any value of the resistance RX. But what should be the optimum value of RX? Let's substitute XX by its optimum value, the negative of X7, and that cancels out the second term of the denominator, and PX can be written in a much simpler form. PX, the external active power, is just V7 squared, the RMS value of the 7 squared multiplied by RX and divided only by the square of the resistance in the circuit. The reactance is gone, it was cancelled out by our choice of the external reactance. That is the part we need to maximize. How? Calculus, huh? Take the derivative of Px with respect to the resistance Rx, equate that to zero and solve for Rx. And I'll do that, not by hand, which I did in the classroom already on the blackboard, but let's use a CAS. I will use the CAS of the HP prime. Because I know that there is a little voice in the back of your mind that is bothering you that perhaps my way of finding the optimum value of xx was not very formal, let me have another go at that. I write px again as a function of rx and xx. And uh, this time I will find the derivative, the partial derivative of px with respect to the reactance of the external impedance with respect to xx. And that is the one we will equate to zero in this equation, and that is the equation that we want to find for the optimum value of xx. Check this out. Solve that equation for the value of xx, and guess what we get? Of course, you know what we get, negative of xth. That is the optimum value for the reactance xx. We replace xx by that optimum value, 
and then the formula for power becomes the simplified one, this one, and that is the one that we will differentiate with respect to Rx, equate to zero, and solve for Rx. Allow me, derivative, I call that dpx2, derivative of px with respect to x. My second equation, eq2, will be defined as that derivative equals to zero, and then we solve for Rx, and we get the optimum value of Rx, the one for maximum power, which is no other than R7. Let me copy that result down to paper. For maximum power, we need to make the real part of the external impedance, Rx, equal to the real part of the 7 and equivalent impedance of the circuit, R7. That means that putting all those two results together for maximum power out of that circuit represented with a 7 and equivalent, we need to make the external resistance equal to the 7 and resistance R7 and, and the external reactance equal to the negative of the 7 and reactance. In one word, we say the external impedance should be the complex conjugate of the 7 and impedance of the circuit that we are connecting that external impedance to. And that is the result. But we don't stop there. What is the maximum power that we are extracting now that we have replaced the external impedance Zx with the conjugate of Z7? Hmm. Well, if we replace a Zx with Z7 a conjugate, the external power formula becomes even simpler. Let's see what is the maximum power, shall we? Here, let's make the replacement and Px becomes simply Rx no more. This is R7 and R7 and B7 and square divided by R7 and plus Rx square. No, it is R7 and plus R7 and all of that square. And we can expand and simplify. Expand the denominator that becomes 4 times R7 and square. And the square in the denominator for our 7 and cancels out the 7 and resistance on the numerator. And we are left with a much simpler formula. Look it up. Check in, canceling out our 7 and with the square in the denominator. And that is the maximum power that we can extract out of that circuit. Just V7 and squared divided by 4 times the resistance of the 7 and equivalent impedance of the circuit. And that is all, my friends. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to meet with you all in our next movie.